guys, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and I just finished putting together some 3D numbers, which I'm real excited about, because they're going to be perfect for anyone's birthday, pretty much anyone, whether they're like one years old or like a hundred years old. So it's going to be really fun to pick out your paper, depending on the type of person and what they're into, what they like. So if I was going to make one for like my dad's like milestone birthday of like 65, maybe I would find some really cool fishing or hunting looking paper. So you get the idea. It's going to be really fun to make these for parties and for people. So really excited about that. And then you also get some other party items in your download, which includes this really simple one piece box. So the it's called a one piece box because it all cuts out in just one piece here. So you just cut it out in one piece and you throw it together. Super easy. So I'll show you how that goes together. And then we also have a really fun little party hat, which is cute for taking pictures of people wearing at their special birthday party. So this just has some fun stuff around the bottom, which is real easy to do. So I'll show you how that goes together also. And then finally we have our super cool cupcake box and one is missing because of yours truly but um, this is really fun because it shows off your cupcakes and you can decorate it real nice and the bottom is nice and sturdy so you don't have to worry about it being flimsy on the bottom and another cool part about this is that it comes with different sized holes for the cupcakes so if your cupcakes are a little smaller or bigger you should be able to find just the right size to fit them in your download so I have all my pieces cut out of this really cool paper, which is by American Crafts, and it's the Amy Tangerine Sketchbook Collection. And I chose it for this because it's really colorful and really happy and fun. So these are just the pieces that I have left. I pretty much used it all up. And it's real cute and fun, colorful, good for birthday stuff and for girly stuff, I think. So I have all my pieces cut out. Let's sit down and get started. All right, so let's start with something real simple here. The party hat is nice and simple. And the cool thing about this is if you have double-sided paper, you can go ahead and cut out your hat and your flowers all at once because this is the same paper. So just to put these together, there are 12 little flowers around the bottom. I'm just gonna take my brad and put it through the hole in the middle. And then I can either just go ahead and fold these around now or if I want to add a little dimension, I can take one of my 3D pop dots, also known as Zots, and I can throw one, I can throw four of them inside here to kind of poof it up a little bit. Or I can just do like so and just fold it over. It doesn't really matter in what order you go. But I think this little flower is fun just because it's it's kind of new and different and it's not realistic, it's just kind of kind of playful, modern, a little funky. So there we go. I already got one in place and there are 12 little holes along the bottom here except for these two here and also these two over here which you use to put your elastic through to put your hat on. So I'm just going to put my little flower through there and fasten the brad on the other side. And once it's in place I'm going to well, I want this thing to go this way so I can fold it out. And then I'm just going to bend this up with the flower and the little piece there. So just go ahead and put all your flowers all the way around. And then when you're ready to close it up, you want to put your tab going in from the top, not up from the bottom, but rather in from the top. And I don't even need any glue. Just put it in there like that. There you go. So here we've got our one piece box and like I was saying I cut this out of double sided paper so that my little flower here which all cut out at the same time I was able to just flip that over to show off the other side of the paper. So I went ahead and put my flower on. Now I'm just going to take note of where the lid is because the lid has these curved edges on it and it has these little tiny tabs up here. So I'm going to start by putting glue on those two small tabs and then I'm going to just fold it over and hold that while it dries on both sides. And I'll just give that a couple more seconds to really get a good hold there. And then the rest is pretty simple and self-explanatory. 
All I'm going to do here is just put glue on this tab and close that up. And then I'm just going to put glue on these three tabs and close that guy up. And then we'll just have our box here and the lid just folds down like that. So super simple pennant. I probably don't even need to show you this, but I just wanted to give you a little look here at the pennant. Obviously it's just folded in half. You just put your ribbon or your string up through there. If you want to put a couple of brads in there, you can do that before you glue it and then just get a line of them with coordinating paper and it's super cute. So now I've got the bottom of my cupcake box and I'm just going to show you the bottom because the top is pretty much the same. It just has an opening so you can see through the top. So there are four sides to the bottom and I've got my insert piece here and my cupcakes that I bought at the store were like jumbo cupcakes so I used the largest insert size here which is in the extras folder and I went ahead and I glued the insert liner on the top which just reinforces it. And then I've got my bottom piece, which is the pink piece, and I've got a liner, which is the green piece. It's a little bit smaller because it's going to go on top at the end and cover up some little tabs that we might see. And then finally, I've got two pieces of chipboard, which I cut out at 8.75 inches on all sides. So that is just going to go in to add some reinforcement and make it nice and sturdy. And then finally, we've got these four pieces here which are going to go underneath the insert to hold it up off the bottom. So let's start by taking our four side pieces for the bottom here and all I'm going to do is one at a time I'm going to put glue on this side tab and glue them together in a row until I get to the end which at which time I'll close it up here. So go ahead and do that. So I've got my four pieces here all glued together. I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to put a nice thin even layer of glue on all four of these tabs and I'm just going to put my bottom in place. So now I've got the bottom on and next I'm going to take the two pieces of chipboard that I have here and I'm just going to glue them on the inside. And again these are eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. So next I've got my four pieces for the insert here and my insert and the liner. So next let's take our four pieces and I'm just going to put glue on this side tab here and I'm going to glue them again all together until I get to the end and I'm going to close it up like this. Now I've got the four pieces all glued together and as you can see these tabs on the top here are smaller than the ones on the bottom. So these ones on the bottom are going to get this glued to them so it goes on the inside. And these are just folded back to be out of the way. And then once you have this glued in place down there, we can go ahead and fold these in on all sides. And then we're just going to put glue on all four of these small tabs and take our insert and just glue that right into place. And then as you probably guessed it, we're just going to put glue on the bottom of this and we're just going to insert it right into our box. Except of course yours will be glued together and it'll be nice and sturdy and it just slides right down in there with glue on the bottom. Alright so I've got the pieces cut out for a number two because I think that it's a real middle of the road number here and the more curved that your number is kind of the, the more difficult it is to do like the zero is definitely the most difficult to do and the four has like no curves on it so it's real simple and easy. So I've got the front and the back here and the face is glued on. This decorative face is already glued. And then there are three pieces like this here. And the way that we know in what order to glue them to each other is by these little shapes up here. Like there's a tiny little circle and on this end there's a tiny triangle. And here's another tiny triangle so we know that these two get glued together like this. And then here's a tiny little square and another tiny square. So this is going to get glued together like this. And then at the end it's going to make a full loop here and we're going to go circle to circle and close up the loop. So now all my pieces are in a loop here and I'm just going to go around and wherever I see a perforation and a score, a score area, I'm going to just fold it to 
get it going. And there's not always one where you might think there is. So only fold where there are score marks. So next let's set this down and take our face of our number and lay it face down on your work surface. And now we just want to get an idea of where our piece is supposed to go here. And I can see that this big piece right here is obviously flat. That's obviously going to go on the bottom. And then next to it, it's got a shorter piece. So I can tell that that is the side of the two and so on. So I can see that my pieces are going to kind of curve like this with this part up here being right here. So I want to start by folding over all the pieces that are going to be glued down. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to fold over all of these little tabs one by one or two by two. Just make your way around and fold them all over. So I've got all the, the teeth folded over and I know that this part is the bottom here. So, and I also know where my number is kind of going to be going. So before you start gluing, you want to make sure that you know basically where things are going so that you have the right piece in the right place. So I'm going to start by just putting this in place and that is going to be my first placeholder. So I will just line that up real nice edge to edge. And the more precise you can be, the better. You don't really have a choice. You have to be real precise. And all right, so I've got that in place. Now to put all the other pieces in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on about half of the number on the inside. I'm going to put a nice little thin line. And I would do the whole entire number, but by the time I get to the end, it will probably be dry. So I'm only going to do about half of it. And I'm going to lay it down flat on my work surface. And I'm going to just one at a time, just line up one little, little triangle tab at a time. And I'm holding it inside here with my thumb. And I'm looking over here to make sure that it's lined up edge to edge, not going over, but not being too far inside. And then once that's dry, I'm going to move on to the next tab. I'm just going to work my way all the way around the whole entire number, basically. And then when I get to a distinct area, like when, when I'm done with this curve and I get to this flat area, I want to be sure that my piece lines up real nice right here with this one. So then I can use that to make sure that all of these tabs are going in the right direction. So these pieces are in place on part of it here. And I'm just going to, I would keep going, but I think since I know that these pieces are real certain about where they go, I'm going to do these flat pieces next. And then I'm just going to do the same thing and finish off this curve around the back. All right, so I've got all my side pieces glued onto my front and it actually looks pretty awesome. It's, it's not perfect. It's going to be almost impossible to get it like 100% perfect, but it's very close to perfect. So I'm going to flip it over and I have some stale jelly beans that I'm going to put inside because I'm not too worried about, about mice getting in here and I think it's going to be fine. If you're going to use food, just be mindful of that if you're going to store it or whatever. Um, don't want little, little vermin getting in there. So a good idea might be some if you have some extra beads that you don't really like that much or if you have some clean gravel that would work. Those are some good things to put inside, especially if the bottom of your number is round, like the number nine. But it's also nice to have in there, even if your number's flat on the bottom like my two. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just folding over the rest of the tabs on this side. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on all of these tabs. I'm not going to go section by section because once I start to put it on, it's just too hard to lift it up and it kind of pulls it apart to try to do it section by section. So I'm going to put glue on all of these tabs, a nice thin, even layer. 
and then I'm going to just place my back in place and it's real easy where there's a corner to hold it where it dries and it, you can tell where it should be. The curves are a little bit trickier so you're just going to move it around a little bit. If it's too far in I can just take my fingernail and pull it out a little bit and I just want to do my best to get the edges lined up which is a little tricky but if you take your time you can do it and if yours is not 100% perfect like mine weren't 100% perfect um, you can when you're all done and the back is glued on if you need to you can always take some nice little precision trimmers and just kind of trim a little bit of the extra paper off of the side and then if you also want to go a step further you can just take some sandpaper and even rub that on the edge so there you have it, super fun projects and I'm really loving the numbers. I can't wait to make some for my nieces and nephews birthdays and for maybe my parents anniversary next year. So it's going to be a lot of fun and if you make any of these I would love to see pictures of them as always on our Facebook wall or in our forum. So you'll have to share pictures. So that's it, thanks for watching and happy crafting! Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. svgcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.